Well, Minister, this is to ask you when a compensation package will be introduced for beef farmers, considering the very significant decrease in prices and incomes since last autumn from the impact of Brexit. And also, Minister, to clarify from you whether a formal application has been submitted to the European uh, Commission for exceptional or market disturbance aid. And, uh, Minister, there seems to be conflicting stories in relation to exactly what you've applied for uh, and when you applied for it, and more importantly, when aid is going to come to the beef sector, which are crying out for it and desperately in need of it. And I hope this morning you will be able to take that opportunity to give an assurance uh, that there will be aid forthcoming promptly and also to give clarity in relation to what is being applied for. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Two minutes. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, the agri-food sector is of critical importance to the Irish economy and its regional spread means it underpins the socio-economic development of rural areas in particular. Brexit has the potential to have a very significant impact on the sector given its unique exposure to the United Kingdom market, which accounted for 38 per cent or 5.2 billion euro of agri-food exports last year. There are ongoing discussions with the Commission regarding the difficulties which would face Ireland in the event of a no-deal Brexit and the assistance that might be required for its agriculture, food and fisheries sectors. Avoiding a no-deal Brexit continues to be the Government's overriding policy priority. I have held a number of discussions with Commissioner Hogan regarding the potential impact of a disorderly Brexit on the sector. I have stressed the need for the Commission to be ready to deploy a range of measures to mitigate the potential impacts on agri-food and fisheries, including through traditional market supports and exceptional aid under the CAP's Single Common Market Organisation regulation as well as increased flexibility under state aid regulations. However, it is also important to acknowledge that the past few months have been very difficult for beef farmers, in particular following a difficult year in 2018 due to weather conditions. There has been a prolonged and exceptional period of depressed prices since last autumn, with the ongoing uncertainty surrounding the outcome of Brexit, among other factors, contributing to this market disturbance. In light of the ongoing depressed market prices, I have, in discussions with Commissioner Hogan and my European Union counterparts, said that I believe that the deployment of exceptional measures under the CMO regulation to provide targeted aid to farm families who have suffered a sustained reduction in returns from the market is now required. I made an intervention to this effect at the April meeting of the Council of Agriculture Ministers, and my officials have followed this up with a detailed submission which is under consideration by Commission officials. Thank you very much, Minister. Deputy McConnell, one minute. Minister, again, there is very little detail from you in relation to when exactly farmers can expect to receive the support that they need. And as you should well know, Minister, farmers needed this support months ago, not, um, in, the, not in the next number of weeks or months, because Brexit has been happening and impacting on the beef sector over the last period of time. Unfortunately, you and the government have not been recognising this and have not been acting on it. And despite the grave threat posed, to bre posed by Brexit, you haven't used that opportunity and that uh, difficulty to ensure that we are drawing down funds from the European Commission to actually support our beef farmers. Your performance and the government's performance in this has simply been unacceptable as, and has been neglectful of the farming community and the massive pressure they're under. We see, Minister, in the Farmers' Journal today, a report from, from uh, Professor Michael Wallace of UCD um, outlining that if there isn't action taken, over the next 10 years uh, we will see some 140,000 cows reduced from the suckler, uh, from the suckler herd and, indeed, um, Minister, an impact on um, 14, 000, with 14,000 suckler farmers leaving the sector and, indeed, impacting on the some 52,000 jobs in rural Ireland that is underpinned in relation to it. It is essential we see this fund come immediately, Minister. And can you give an assurance to the many farmers who are desperately in need of it, Minister, today as to when it actually will come Thank and you. the extent of the fund that will be available? Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, look, I, I don't accept the deputy's charge that we have been we haven't been doing anything. Uh, there's a, there's a there's a two-stranded approach to this. One is at the European Union level, and one is what the government itself can do. And in terms of what the government itself can do, in terms of market access, in terms of live exports, in terms of supporting producer organisations, in terms of the beef environmental efficiency programme, in terms of restoring payments in ANC, there's been a significant level of government commitment in that area. What the government also does then at, at, at the level at which your question is pitched is works at a commission level. 
uh, to try and ensure that we get the best possible deal for Irish agriculture. And as I said, our overwhelming focus, understandably, in the context of Brexit has been you know, to ensure that farmers would be supported in the event of a crash out. I understand the view that says we're dealing with Brexit already. There is you know, market sentiment, there is sterling issue, um, you know, and there is compounding that you have the issue of bad weather. So we have been making the case in recent times that apart altogether from the, the, the supports that would be necessary in the context of Brexit, that there is a case to be made now for the Commission to respond to uh, in, in terms of the difficulties that the industry is facing. Thank you. One final minute, Deputy McConnell. Minister, you're saying, uh, you, you're saying that uh, it's not correct that you haven't done anything as a government. You're saying there's two strands to your response, the European Commission response and your response. Well, I would put it to you, Minister, in relation to the response and support for the agri-food sector and for the beef sector in particular, neither of those strands have delivered a response. Because you've outlined there, you mentioned the ANC scheme. Well, all that's happened with the ANC scheme is that the payments have been restored to previous levels of a number of years ago. Yes, we've seen the beef scheme, but between the beef scheme and the beef data genomics programme, Minister, neither add up to what would have been available under the previous suckler cow welfare programme. And we heard you talking for about two years how you were going to introduce a Brexit loan scheme and that that was going to be your big ticket response to assist the farming community. It's only about last month, Minister, after two years of talking, that you actually finally introduced that. And as far as the European Commission goes, we have seen no funding come from the European Commission yet, despite two years of Brexit negotiations. No funding coming to support the Irish agri-food sector, which has been under massive distress. So it's past time you got your act together, Minister, and recognised the massive pressure that the farming community is under. And it shouldn't take protests outside the Cabinet meeting in Cork last week to draw some type of a response from the Government in this regard. And I'm asking you this morning, Minister, to give a guarantee that there will be funding in relation to this and to guarantee that it will happen promptly, because what we've seen before now has been absolutely unacceptable and an entire neglect of our farming you. Uh, sector from you and from the government. Final comment, Minister. The government, um, I, I just don't agree with the deputy, but that's, um, I don't expect the deputy to agree with me either. I mean, our, our responses have been comprehensive and, you know, I never presented the Brexit loan scheme as the panacea for all of the, the Brexit challenges. Far from it. You may have elevated it to that uh, status yourself. It is the third of three uh, financial products that we have developed for the agri-food and farming and fishery sector. And it's an important part of the jigsaw that's necessary to support uh, the industry in, in all its manifestations. But there, is, there are things the government can do, and the government has done, um, in terms of, as, as I said, market access, live exports, etc., and the other things which I mentioned earlier, ANC and beef producer organisations. But we have also made the case at a European Union level. And I mean, the response initially uh, in terms of Brexit was to make sure, should the UK crash out, that there would be supports level, uh, available from the European Commission. And should the U UK crash out, those supports will be available. Thank you, and the Commission has said that. Now, those supports are different to the supports we're looking for now in the context of current market difficulties.